Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the x ride seminars. Today we will speak about inline color measurement and closed loop color control in the paper industry. Just a few words to the speaker. Myself, I'm Nicholas Seifried. I uh, studied in Cologne and uh, terminated with a Master of Physical Optics. Since 2014, I'm the International Sales Manager at x -Rite, and I'm the Sales Specialist for France and Southeast of Asia. So, starting the um, presentation, I would like to ask two questions. The first one is, why is it so important to talk about color? Well, looking at these packages, which package would you take? This is, I'm not sure if the if you would take the above packages because they are darker, I certainly wouldn't. I would take the other ones. Same with this packages. This um, piece of furniture contained in these packages was made of two packages, one smaller and one bigger. And they all have different, uh, the smaller ones have different colors than the bigger ones. And uh, presumably, uh, they will not have the same color inside. So color is an important criterion. And the same with these folders. We see the differences. The human eye can see that the yellows are not identical or the blues are different. And color is important because color is a primary quality criteria. 80% of the human experience is filtered through the eyes. And this is even uh, more important to realize that color is really critical. And this brings me to the second question. Why do we have to measure the color? If we see it with the eyes, why do we have to measure it? Look at this color for a few seconds. I will take it away. And now, which one was the color? It's very difficult to find out. If you, you, if you choose the swatch N, you were right. And as you can see, it's very difficult to remember the color and try to differentiate the colors from each other just by memory. So we can't really remember colors. Only a direct comparison shows if the color was the right one or not. And for this reason exactly, we need a color measurement for evaluation of the colors. So in the paper industry, the uh, general way to uh, produce paper, you can see a paper machine in the back, you have an incoming inspection of the raw materials. You have a quality control laboratory, which um, checks if the uh, raw materials are correctly delivered. And of course, the finished products before leaving the company, they are checked as well. If you don't measure the color, it's like being blind. If you use the instrument, for example, just before relap, measuring the color, it even can automatically control the dyes at the beginning, at the very beginning of the process. So we measure the color and measuring the color will allow us to have a closed loop color control system, which helps the operators to run the production within the required tolerances. So the challenge is following. The raw materials are made of recycled paper, fillers, for example, which have a complete different color, additives. Even the pH value of the water can influence the color of the pulp and, of course, the dye concentration. All those will influence the color and what the paper mill wants to obtain is a consistent color, a consistent paper color. So the challenge is 
from out from these um, raw materials to have a constant paper color at the end. So using the instrument will help, as we said. The instrument is called ERX50. It's a spectrophotometer. It's connected to a PC. And to be able to install it in the paper machine, the ERX50 is inserted in this frame. The frame will allow the, uh, the instrument to be moved away in a parking position and will allow also to protect the instrument if there is a paper break and the paper comes onto this frame. It, in fact, the instrument tilts away from the uh, towards the operator in this case. There is a frame control box to allow the lower arm to move. And there is a power supply for the ERX50. And that's a place where the external signals arrive. External signals could be, for example, real change paper break. So the frame and the machine of, and the, the instrument, of course, are on the machine itself. And in the control room, which can be 500 meters away, there is the PC showing the values, the measured values. We will have a close look at that later on. And you have the interface, the ECX interface, we call it ECX. It transforms the signals provided by, this, by the instrument into PC readable signals. And that's the place also where the um, pumps are connected. They are connected through the PLC to the ECX interface. And of course, the, uh, all the data can be transferred uh, with an OPC to a server, for example, a DCS server. There are several measurement positions possible in the machine. The first position could be the measurement in the pulp. That's a possibility to realize a pre-warning system. Uh, yes, it, you, one can uh, say that if there is not enough blue, for example, at this place, we can already add some blue uh, uh, dye. It's, this uh, position is used extremely seldomly. The second position is in the middle of the machine where the paper is still wet. And this position is used for most of the laminated paper because the uh, wet paper has the same refraction index than the finished paper with the um, uh, melamine on top of the paper. Uh, it gives exactly the same um, refraction index compared to the laminated paper. And the third position is just before relap. That's the most common position. Uh, it gives the best results. Why? Because um, there is an excellent correlation to the laboratory. Optical brightness can be measured exactly here. And also it allows to measure, um, to realize a CLCC. The, the closed loop color control can be realized if the paper is measured at the end just before relap of the paper. I'm coming back to the good correlation to the lab. What does it mean? The paper is measured in the laboratory and measuring the paper will create reference values. So that's always the start, creating reference values. And the, the, all the paper which is produced after that is always compared to the reference values. So this is a picture of a very typical installation. The instrument is in the frame. So you see it's pretty rugged. It's very industrial. And um, it, um, uh, here you can see the brown paper produced. 
Here you can see a scanner. Um, and the ERX50 is in the yellow circle. Uh, it's uh, not easy to distinguish it, but that's a place where it is. And uh, it runs uh, parallel to the scanner. So whatever scanner is that uh, most of the paper mills uh, have already scanners. Some of those scanners, by the way, are equipped with uh, color measuring instruments but they are not as, by far not as precise as the fixed point measurement. We don't move the instrument over the width of the paper. The, um, the uh, instrument is absolutely fixed, which has a lot of advantages compared to uh, a moving system. That's a very specific frame. We can measure with this frame the top and bottom side of the paper. For some applications, it's uh, really important to measure top and bottom. So there is a specific frame which has been developed. That's the frame that's a massive piece of frame. And on this frame, you have two instruments uh, to measure top and bottom of the uh, paper. And that's a, a picture of an installation which was uh, new right after the installation and the next picture will show you an instrument which uh, has been in use for many many years let's say uh, it's a tissue paper which is produced here so tissue paper is the uh, um, same as a uh, hygienic paper for example and uh, there are a lot of very very small fibers in the air the aperture of the instrument stays always clean because uh, it closes after each flash it closes mechanically and uh, also the instrument has some uh, pressurized air which runs through it to keep it clean and to keep it dry and uh, you can see the 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 air has already um, you can see the the air is holding this aperture uh, clean. You can see the air has on this on this portion of the instrument. There is no um, no uh, fibers sticking. Now we see what the operator sees in his uh, room. At each time the instrument flashes, it gives a next bar. So you can see uh, at the end the bars become smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can all, all always see the last hours of production. Uh, on the right side, you see it's L on the top. On the right side here, you can see L star is measured, A star and B star. Here it's delta E, for example, and this would be the uh, OBAs. So you can see that L, for example, is when it's too dark, it's very, you don't need to be a color specialist, but when it's too dark, it's black. When it's uh, too bright, it's white. So it's very easy, that's, that's L. For A, it's um, when it's too red, it's uh, it goes uh, up, and when it's too green, it goes down. Same for B, it's yellow and blue. For the delta E, it's um, uh, the same. You can see the green line is a tolerance line, and you can see the uh, OBAs. You can see two red bars on the left side, meaning they these values are out of tolerance. So it's very easy to um, to check all that. And um, now we've seen the, 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 the instrument, we've seen the, the, the frame, we've seen what the results on the PC. And these results on the PC in the uh, components necessary to realize a closed loop color control, these values are transmitted to the PLC of the pump. So that's the screen. That's the PLC of, of the pump. You have here a pump skid with motors and pumps, uh, three or four pumps. And uh, the dyes are um, running through these pumps and um, they are injected in the process uh, of, the paper, uh, of the paper mill. So it's a closed loop system. There is a huge piece of software necessary to adjust and regulate and control the pumps. That's the core of the system. And uh, in this example here, we show that three 
dyes such as blue, red, and yellow will influence L, A, and B. So in this picture, you might think that blue is influencing L, red is influencing A, and yellow is influencing B. Such is not really the case. In fact, when blue is added, it influences L, A, and B. Red will influence L, A, and B as well, and yellow as well. So every dye stuff interacts with all three axes of the C lab system. Um, if an OBA is used, if, if it becomes even more complicated because these colors will influence the OBAs and the OBAs will influence the colors as well. The uh, software will take this into consideration, of course. And interestingly wise, most of the in most of the paper mills, the paper makers when they change the paper grade or the the color of the paper or whatever there is a change the paper makers will adjust the pipe flows the width of the paper caliper chemistry ph value they will all they will check all this and adjust it to the new parameters and once this is done they will adjust the color and someone will run to the pumps and adjust them more or less manually before an, an automatic operation will take over. With the automatic closed loop color control, which we have developed, the paper makers will do exactly the same. They will adjust the pulp flows, the widths, the caliper, the chemistry, the pH values, all the parameters which are important and we, which need to be adjusted uh, to the new grade or to the new um, uh, width of the paper, whatever has to be changed. And in parallel, the color is adjusted completely automatically. So the color adjustment starts a little bit later, of course, but it's adjusted in parallel. And that's the, this allows to save money. This will be the highest money saver, this quicker startup and more time to manufacture sellable paper. This will be the most important criterion. So here is a small list of advantages which, um, which we wrote down to show the advantages of the uh, system. It provides on-time process correction. It's immediate. It minimizes the startup and the shape change times. We've seen that in the, in the slide just before. It minimizes off-spec production. So it minimizes also the, the uh, uh, paper which has to be recycled in the process or the handling of the recycled paper, which is pretty expensive as well. And it increases the sellable paper. It improves product uniformity and the uh, product quality. It really optimizes the dye consumption and it takes the guesswork out of color changes. Well, maybe some of red, maybe some of blue. Now it's completely automated. And the operators can focus more on optimization of the production. And it, of course, minimizes the need for eventual tear out samples. Now we've seen all that. Um, I would like to um, come to a, a case which we had. Uh, the, the paper mill was called uh, LIPA, is called LIPA, Leinfelder. And uh, the installation and system setup was done in, two, in July 2007 and under extremely um, high time pressures. Uh, also, there were several positions which were vacant and it was vacation time. So that was the uh, challenge. Uh, of course, the colors and the recipes used were stored in the software up front, and the adjustment of the inline system to the offline uh, laboratory device was done as well. So uh, luckily, but nevertheless, the sellable paper quality was reached after 20 minutes, and the stuff training was done during that commission. Um, that's the same uh, company. 
the startup after a sheet break, for example, in this case, they produced a paper called Yellow Manila. You can see that before using the CLCC after a paper break, you can see that the um, B value, for example, or even A value was completely out of range. Um, the uh, B value, or the A value was quite okay, but the B value was pretty high, and the delta E was completely out of tolerance. So this was um, this all this portion of paper after the paper break was completely lost. So this was this was kind of an issue. And after the optimization, meaning after the installation of the CLCC, you can see that before and after the paper break, the values are completely constant because the system reacts extremely fast and extremely um, uh, reliably. So this was, uh, in fact, after a paper break, immediately the production starts again and the paper is sellable again because the system registers the the values so it's it's extremely um, um, uh, economical also to use the system well that was the presentation i'm happy you joined if you need any further information you may contact um us at the phone or mail showed here or uh, in the invitation which we sent you um if you have immediate questions you can of course um because the uh, the microphones are not working i think but you can write them down in the uh questions there is a on the on the uh go to webinar um uh, presentation there is a little rubric and it's called questions you may write it down and uh, should you have anything we will it will be a pleasure for me to answer that but nevertheless thank you for joining and um, I appreciate very much you you uh, listened uh, and as I said uh, if you need a copy of this presentation just let me know send a little mail um, call uh, not now, but tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, it will be a pleasure for me to send you over the um, the presentation and a film showing the uh, how the system really works on a moving uh, paper web, under the moving paper web. Okay, that was the... Um, it can measure okay i have a question here measure in more than one point do we need or is it recommended to measure in more than one point it is absolutely correct to leave the instrument as is and to measure at this point why because the color does not change over the width of the paper it never changes it it changes only in machine direction but very seldomly over the width of the paper it can have some uh, this is exactly the advantage we have because if the paper is humid if the paper is hot at some spots it will influence the color and influencing the color so you see the advantage of non-moving will is immediately visible if you move the instrument over the width of the paper it will give different results for that reason we are not even the the erx 50 it's not necessary to average any measures you can use every single measured point with a scanner for example which is equipped with a color measuring system you have to uh, average at least three or four or five different values or measurements because the, you will always obtain some differences in the measurements due to humidity, heat, um, whatever, thickness of the paper, I don't know, all the parameters which, uh, which, uh, have, uh, which can influence the, the measurements. So that's a very good point, yeah, excellent point. For example, also I'm telling you the um, the paper which is uh, which is needed to uh, uh, to realize bank notes, for example, or um, other um, financial uh, products. Let's say the uh, instrument 
measures is placed in such a way that it measures in between watermarks, for example, or in between these silver, uh, silver stripes, which are uh, included in the paper during the production. And uh, so they do not influence at this point the measurements. When it comes to paper uh, for bank, uh, bank paper, uh, a non-moving system is absolutely recommended. For example, that's another good example. Yeah. Okay. So no more questions. Uh, good. Excellent. Uh, I I hope the presentation was clear. And uh, as I said, should you have any question or need any detail, or if you want any uh, recommendation for your own um, uh, paper production, we can send you all the information you need, and we can even send you a sheet allowing you to calculate the return of invest of such an instrument. The return of invest of such an instrument is done between six and 12 months, usually. So it's really interesting. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. It was a pleasure for me. And uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.